I think they're now taking the issue more seriously than maybe they were a year ago. I think that's uh, constructive, and I think they even probably Facebook was surprised when, when they looked at the data. I think I saw yesterday 126 million people were exposed to some of these kind of ads related to the election. So I think people were, were uh, you know, a little slow off the you know, dime in dealing with the issue, but are now much more engaged. Usually self-regulation is the better approach. Obviously, in the early days of the Internet, when I was running AOL, we tried to do that on a lot of different issues. At the same time, it's, it's understandable why folks here in, in Congress think at this point there needs to be more disclosure, including that these the election ads are, are paid for just and who they're paid for by, just as they do that on on television. So my guess is it will be a mix of some more self-regulation with the major players, Facebook and Google in particular, taking more of a lead on putting the, the rules of the road in place. Uh, but also there likely will be uh, some more either legislation or, or regulation. The Internet's now become so central in terms of everyday life, it's not surprising that we're having more and more of these kind of discussions. Well, exactly, and that's why I find this also daunting. And they're focused on the election, they're focused on political operatives, whether they're bots or trolls buying ads or posts. But if you put that aside, still the, the social media, the fact that so many use this platform, it has been a platform for hate speech and harassment and terrorists. And that's just going to be a problem still. I mean, how do you sort of wrap your head around all of that? And is there any fix? Well, it's, it's, again, it goes back to the, the reality that the Internet has arrived. We got started with AOL over 30 years ago, only 3% of people were online for less than an hour a week. Now everybody's online and it's and it really throughout the, you know, the day. So it's really become part of everyday life. And as a result, there are many great things that come from these services, Facebook and Google. People love what they can, can do in terms of connecting to people and ideas and so forth. But there are also some negatives. And the, the, the challenge is always, how do you maximize some of the positives and minimize some of the you know, negatives? And it does require these companies to think less like those agile in the garage startups and more as global behemoths they really have significant influence on business and, and culture on society and more and more stepping up to that that responsibility it's, it's, there's, there's a reason why a, a country like the united states of america has to act more carefully than a small you know country somewhere else in in in, in the world people expect more from the united states people expect more from the leaders uh in in you know, major fit, fortune 50 companies including some of the companies such as facebook and and google there's a half trillion dollars or more value companies they have you know, billions of users and have a significant impact on, 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 on everyday life and, and business and, and commerce. So it's not surprising that there's now more, more, uh, more scrutiny. There's a little bit of a, a backlash, I think, now to, to big tech, a little bit of a backlash to, to Silicon Valley. Hey, uh, Steve, you were quoted in a profile of Mark Warner saying that he'd probably rather be focused on issues like the future of work. You yourself right. uh, have worked on trying to spread the geographic flow of capital and the rise of the rest. I mean, how much of, the, of our bandwidth, our available bandwidth as a nation is being taken up by this and are other issues going to suffer as a result? Well, to some extent, yes. I mean, it's now become a major issue. As you mentioned, Senator Warner has been working on issues around future work and even the future of capitalism and other things for, for several years. And because of what's happened here with this Russia investigation, he's had to spend a lot more time on that. So he had obviously less time to spend on some of these other issues. So I think it's a serious issue. It requires really getting to the bottom of it, understanding what, what happened and why and how do you keep it from happening again. But hopefully we'll get through that and be able to focus on, on some issues. What I've called the, the third wave of the Internet is going to have a huge impact on on the workplace a huge impact on how we need to think about government and, and regulations and also the rise of the rest how do you back more entrepreneurs in more places is a critical ingredient I'm heading head from this uh, interview to the hill to talk about some things like the investing in opportunity yeah. act Steve quickly if you can is there anything controversial you see in this draft of the honest ads act I mean talking about keeping a record of who's placing the ads how much they're spending who they're targeting and how I mean it, why wouldn't the companies agree to this. Well, I haven't talked to the company, so I know they would prefer self-regulation. Obviously, every company would, but my, I don't think the, the legislation that's been proposed with the Honest Ads is, is unreasonable, and so I think that or something like that likely will, will pass. If the companies had acted earlier, they probably would have been able to put in place self-regulation maybe a year or two ago, and maybe that would have been sufficient, but at this point, likely it's going to be some mix of continued self-regulation and also you know, some legislation. But I also want to give credit to some of these companies. They're, they're dealing with these issues also 
also, uh, two weeks ago, I did another Rise Arrest road trip. We were in Michigan, Ohio, Indiana, and companies like Google opened a new office in Detroit with six or 700 new employees. Getting Silicon Valley, investing in the middle of the country, creating jobs in the middle of the country, particularly backing entrepreneurs with, with capital in the middle of the country is also a way I mean, more people in more parts of the country will feel part of the future and, and have a more positive feeling about what's happening in places like Silicon Valley. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.